Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and every Pokemon fan at some point or another has envisioned themselves living within the Pokemon world. I certainly have, and I think it would be great with the super important assumption that the physics of the Pokemon world are those of the anime. If there's gonna be giant fire-breathing dragons just walking around, them blasting me needs to do no more than cover me in some soot. However, even if Pokemon themselves were not in immediately present danger, there are still quite a few places in the Pokemon world that I would rather not live. Today, I'm going to be listing every city and town in main series Pokemon in generational order that I would absolutely not be willing to live in. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. I meant to say please and I just said thank you. <laughs> I guess you did it, thanks. And let's dive in. The first place is Cinnabar Island. In the Kanto games, it seems like a nice little island town featuring a world-renowned research lab, a gym that's sure to boost the local economy due to travelers, and the Pokemon Mansion. The mansion is not as nice, but it is a pretty interesting local training ground. Now, some of you may be thinking that Cinnabar Island would be an undesirable place to live because, well, there are no houses. The only buildings on the island are the mansion, gym, lab, mart, and Pokemon Center. Where would anyone realistically live? For Cinnabar Island and almost every other town I discuss in this video, I will not be taking the number of buildings literally. Most of these towns were designed on small handheld consoles decades ago, so due to that limited power and memory, it didn't make any sense for them to add extra unnecessary buildings for the sake of realism. Because of that, I'm just gonna assume all the towns and cities have a realistic number of buildings and homes and that all of them don't face the same direction. So Cinnabar Island seems like a nice island town in the Kanto games, but then you fast forward to the Johto games and see that the whole place has blown up. At some point in the three years between the events of the Kanto and Johto games, the volcano on Cinnabar Island erupted, destroying the whole town. All that remains is a Pokemon Center, which is likely a new one constructed after the eruption. And yes, Cinnabar Island does have a volcano. It doesn't look like that in the games, but if you look closely on the Kanto maps, all of them, even dating back to Gen 1, you can see that there is indeed a volcano nearby. It's inconsistent as to where it is in relation to the island, but it does exist. So in short, living on Cinnabar before the eruption means that there's going to be an eruption, and living on Cinnabar after the eruption means, I guess, staying in the Pokemon Center on a slab of nothing in the ocean? No thank you. I'll continue in generational order, so the next town I'd rather not live in is Blackthorn City in the Johto region. Now, this city is not an immediate threat to my well-being like Cinnabar Island could be. However, I still would rather not live there because it is too darn isolated. Blackthorn City is nestled in the mountains in the northeast of Johto. In the games, the route to the south is Route 45, a one-way route due to it being a consistent descent down a canyon. That means the only way to get to Blackthorn by foot is to trudge through the ice path, a frigid, dark, and large cave. The ice path is such a grueling journey that there are no trainers in there whereas most other connecting caves have at least a few. I know some people like living in remote places, but I am not one of those people. I like being close to civilization so that there's access to resources and amenities and good medical care. And that way, if there's some kind of crisis, people bringing in help can get there easily. Blackthorn being so isolated seems like a food shortage waiting to happen. What happens if the ice path caves in, guys? Did you think about that? Now, of course you can get to Blackthorn City through the air, probably just by using flying Pokemon though, cause I don't really see a spot for a plane or a helicopter, do you? However, that being absolutely necessary is a deal breaker for me because flying Pokemon isn't always the best mode of transport, especially when the weather's not good. And also I may not have a large enough flying Pokemon. What if I'm not a trainer? What if I'm an accountant? My God, how would I get in and out of the city? I wouldn't, I'd just be stuck in the mountains accounting all day. No, thank you. Ha ha, it is I, Grunty Boy. Ugh, what do you want? Do you remember the time I was here when we talked about Dr. Squatch, the sponsor of today's video? Do I remember? 
Do I remember when you broke into my house and showered in my shower using my bar of Dr. Squatch? The image. is forever burned into my mind. I wish I could forget it, but I have not. Well, neither have I. My life has been wildly improved since I switched to using Dr. Squatch. It feels amazing on my skin and I have never smelled better. Plus, it's made with all natural ingredients, so my worries about harsh chemicals in my soap are gone. I'm really glad to hear you're enjoying the soap. I'm enjoying using it as well. But did you really come all this way to tell me about the greatness of a soap that I use already and actually introduced you to? No, I came to ask for more. Can't you just buy some more? What do you mean buy more? I never bought any in the first place. What do you mean you didn't... Wait, have you been using my shower and my Dr. Squatch this whole time? Well, it's great soap. Grunty boy, you, you, you know what? I want you to take this bar of grapefruit IPA. It is my favorite scent, but I'm going to give it to you on the condition that you use it in your own shower and completely stop using both my shower and my Dr. Squatch. Okay, but what do I do when this bar runs out? You buy your own. You and any other new customers can get 20% off orders of $20 or more by heading to drsquatch.com and using code DSCMNJTV20. The link is in the description below. All right, all right, I admit that's a good deal. Thanks, shower buddy. Ta-ta! I told you not to call me that and... Ugh. Anyways, thanks so much to Dr. Squatch for sponsoring this video, but now let's get back to it. Now we move on to the Hoenn region. And while I love Hoenn and really appreciate all the creative and unique town designs in that region, I appreciate them in the realm of a fictional video game. If I had to live in the Hoenn region, my goodness, there are several towns where I would rather not. First, let's talk about Fortree City. Fortree City is one of my favorite towns in Pokemon since I've always loved tree houses and tree house civilizations, like those of the Ewoks, the Swiss Family Robinson, or the Freedom Fighters in Avatar. Fortree City is the really awesome Pokemon equivalent of that, but my goodness, living there would be incredibly impractical. All the tree houses in the game versions require the climbing of a ladder to access. I am physically capable of climbing a ladder and would probably get in good enough shape enough to do it all the time. However, if I have one arm or one leg injury potentially happening while constantly climbing ladders, then I'm in deep trouble. And even if I'm not injured, how do I get my groceries up? It's not stairs, I need my hands. I would be more open to living there if there was some kind of rope and pulley elevator system implemented, but even with that, I would still be pretty hesitant. A resident of Fortree says that by living in the trees, bug Pokemon sometimes crawl through your windows. Could you imagine waking up in the middle of the night to a Ninkata on your face? No, thank you. Also, while it doesn't rain there in game, the residents talk about how it rains there a lot and it's how the trees have been able to grow so large. Now, I think that's great and beautiful. I wouldn't want to live there. I like my sunlight. Another hoe in town that I think is really cool but would not want to live in is Pacifilog Town. It's a town entirely made of wooden rafts and floating logs in the middle of the ocean built upon a Corsola colony. Supposedly the ancestors of the people in Pacifilog Town were born on boats and lived and died aboard them. Is it interesting? Absolutely. Would I love to spend a brief vacation there? For sure. Would I want to spend all of my time there? Oh no, no. If I lived in Pacifilog Town, I would basically always be wet. The logs sink a bit when you walk on them. The rafts are not super tall, so water's gonna be constantly splashing on over top of them. I would have to swim all the time, even when I was not in the mood for, or if it was cold outside. Also, the platforms are rafts, meaning they float and move. So it'd basically be like constantly living on a boat. Now, some people do that, I am not a person who wants to do that. Also, I'm concerned about resource supply. Not just like power and internet, which I don't understand how they have there, but also food. There's no place to grow anything, 
which means your only local options are freaking fish or fish Pokemon, whatever they eat. And if something goes wrong and a food supply ship can't get to the city, well then just what do you do? Keep just eating fish? But my biggest concern of all is storms. If these buildings are built on rafts that move and there are some large storm swells that start happening, how do you think the rafts will fare? I don't think very good and you'd just be in the middle of the ocean. If your house capsizes, what do you do? And as the undesirable cherry on top, there's no Pokemart. Come on guys, where am I supposed to buy my repels that I will absolutely need for any single step off the edge of the rafts? I'll be swarmed by wingles and tentacles without my repels, but I can't buy repels in the ocean town. The next Hoenn city I wanna cover is Evergrande City. I said I would not be taking the number of buildings literally for almost every city in this video, and this one is the exception. Evergrande's lack of buildings is so egregious that to this day, fans question why it's even called a city. It is literally a Pokemon Center, an enormous dangerous cave, and then the Pokemon League, a building primarily used for housing the Elite Four battles. How is this a city? Where would I live? Even if the big Pokemon League building had some apartments that aren't really accessible in the games, what would I do in my free time? Victory Road Spelunk? Also, the only way to get to the city aside from the air is up a waterfall, which is pretty isolated and inconvenient and causes me to have food supply concerns. Let's just say Evergrande City, just call it Nevergrande Island. The last Hoenn City I wanted to mention is Sutopolis City. It's not as undesirable as the other ones I've covered, but I still think I would prefer to live somewhere else. While the night sky is beautiful and I'd get in great shape from constant cliff climbing, its isolation is not ideal. As I discussed in my Seven Wonders of the Pokemon World video, the only ways in and out of it are through the air or under the water. It being within the caldera prevents ships from getting to it, which means traveling out would not be as easy as it would be if I lived on Mosty Island, for example. Like I said, it's not as bad as the other ones I discussed in Hoenn, but I still would rather not. Now on to the Sinnoh region, where the main city I would really not want to live is Snow Point City. Why? Well, it's too darn cold, hell no! I am from Texas. It snowed here, and the whole state broke. I am not accustomed to snow and harsh cold. I didn't even know snow tires were a thing until a few months ago. While I could move to a northern area where it snows, it would be quite the adjustment and it would not be a happy adjustment because as I mentioned, I like my sunlight. Therefore, living in a town where it is literally always snowing sounds awful. It'd be like living in Antarctica. Well, maybe the temperatures wouldn't be as severe, but still. Where does the snow go when it melts? Does it melt at all? There's no roads for crying out loud. Well, maybe there are roads, but we can't see them because they're covered in snow. Also, Snow Point City is pretty isolated. It does have the shipyard, so that makes it better, but still just uh, no. The rest of Sinnoh's town seem pretty pleasant to live in. So let's move on to Unova, starting with Lacanosa Town. Lacanosa Town is a post-game town in black and white, but it's accessed during the main playthrough in black two and white two. The town seems pleasant enough and doesn't appear to have any immediate threats to my safety. But if you do just a bit of digging, you'll see that this place really would not be a pleasant place to live. That's because of the Lacanosa legend. A long time ago, it is said that a large meteor came from the sky containing a terrifying monster. It was said that at night, the monster would appear in the town along with the cold winds and take away humans and Pokemon to eat them. Eventually, the residents of the town surrounded Lakunosa town in a wall to keep the monster out and a rule was then set on the town that forbade anyone from leaving at night and encouraged people to stay in their homes. Even though Lakunosa residents claim to no longer believe this old story, they still stay inside of their houses at night and the walls remain standing to this day. So, QRM from the giant chasm ate people, and now it doesn't appear to do that anymore, 
either because it decided it wasn't interested or the efforts of the La Canosa town residents were effective. How this impacts me is that I might be in danger of being eaten by a frozen dragon monster, but even if I'm not, I will be forced to stay inside at night every night. I don't wanna do that. I enjoy going out in the evenings with friends or family, and I wouldn't be able to do that in La Canosa Town. But on a more serious note, if I did go outside and something bad happened, no one would be around to help me. Even if I screamed for help, they probably would ignore me because they'd be afraid of getting eaten. Lacanosa's motto is methodical and orderly for safety. Now, I get it. They had to do what they had to do, but I would rather just live in another Unova town where there's not the constant threat of being eaten and no nightly stay-at-home orders. I think we can all agree that we're pretty darn tired of stay-at-home orders. Let's move on to the Kalos region, where there are a few towns I would rather not live in. The first is Snowbell City. I won't spend much time on this one because I dislike it for the same reasons as Snowpoint City. It's always snowy. Now to be fair, Snowbell has easier access to not snowy areas than Snowpoint does, like literally the immediately adjacent routes, not sure how those physics work. So while I would pick it over Snowpoint, I still would rather not live in Snowbell. Next is Geosenge Town, and the main reason I would not want to live there is the same reason as Cinnabar Island. It gets destroyed. Prior to the plot events of X and Y, Geosenge seems like a pleasant place to live. It's a bit close to those creepy petrified Pokemon, but that's not a deal breaker for me. But then the ultimate weapon bursts out of the ground, literally toppling the buildings over. And when it ends up destroying itself, it leaves a gaping hole in the middle of the town. And they just never fix it? I've had my Pokemon X save file since the game came out in 2013. The hole in Geosense Town is still there and the houses are still sideways. Like. What? How are there not story events that trigger a repair? Are they just deciding, oh, the town is lost and leaving it like that? Like, what? Like, what is the local government doing in this town? I don't understand. And when I have the options of pretty much the rest of Kalos, like a beach town like Sillage or a thriving metropolis like Lumios, like I'm not gonna live on a plot of land with sideways houses and a hole in the middle of it. Next, we can move on to the Alola region where it's pretty tough to find an undesirable city or town since basically all of them are lovely beach towns. However, there is one in particular that is pretty darn bad, Po-Town. Po-Town seems to have been a lovely coastal town before Team Skull took it over, built walls around it, and let it fall into decrepit decay. There's graffiti everywhere, randomly parked cars. Oh, and yeah, the whole place is overrun by criminals. I know that a lot of fans think Team Skull is not as hardcore or as impressive as previous generation teams because they don't really seem to try to take over the world. However, I would argue that they're pretty freaking hardcore because they took over a whole town permanently. All the other places with all the other teams, if they take over a place, you oust them and they leave. But even after Team Skull gets defeated and disbands, Po-Town is still Po-Town. The people don't get their houses back. That's crazy. I don't think I need to go too much more in depth as to why living in a city overrun by criminals and that's just completely broken would not be very desirable. Heck, the residents of the Alola region agree with me, and none of them live there aside from the Team Skull members, which is not the case for the other towns I've discussed so far. Also, it's always raining, and I like my sunlight. Also, before I move on from Alola, is Tapu Village a city or town? It's called a village, but it's really the site of a former village with the only functioning building being a Pokemon Center. And they don't call it a town or city like all the other towns in Alola. So yeah, I don't think it counts as a city or town. I think it's more of a historical site with a Pokemon Center there that I would not live in. There's like nothing there. Then we reach the Gala region and most of the cities and towns there seem like pretty nice places. However, there are a couple I would prefer not to live in. The first is Spike Myth. The whole thing is indoors, which I do not appreciate. Remember, I like my sunlight, but it's also dirty, unkempt, and overrun by Team Yell. 
Team Yell is not anywhere near as frightening or villainous as other villainous teams since they're not really a villainous team. They're just being obnoxious. But even so, while I wouldn't be afraid for my safety living near them, I would be afraid for my ears. They're so darn loud. Also, if Piers is constantly blaring his weird, no singing concerts, I'd get sick of that real fast. Living in Spike Myth seems like it would be like living in Po Town, but less bad. At least their town seems to be legally occupied. I also quickly wanted to cover Ball and Leia. I have mixed feelings about it. It is beautiful, but I'm unsure about the only access point being through a dark forest. And while it does have light from the mushrooms, it doesn't seem to get much sunlight and I like my sunlight. I think it would probably be fine, but it's not at the top of my list. And then finally is Freezington. Freezington is the town in the Crown Tundra. Like Snowpoint and Snowbell, it's always snowing, which is a big no-no for me. Also, they can't seem to grow crops even after you revive Calyrex, so that shows how big of a help he was. And the train station is oddly quite a hike away. Plus, well, almost everyone there is old. Don't get me wrong, old people are lovely, it's just that I wouldn't really fit in with them or have much in common with them. And that wraps up my list of main series towns and cities where I would rather not live in. Thank you so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you want to help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. Also, if you want to check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans, gotta catch them all.